Hello. Hello. Hi, good morning. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I'm so happy to be able to talk to you about the two of you about this show and about the books. First thing first, Sarah, I'm Barbadian. So I'm just I I'm was just happy. going to get excited. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm always happy when I get to speak to people with West Indian heritage for my work. It's happened to my really so I always appreciate it. The accent. I mean, Carla and I, Carla Simone and I both have the heritage because we're both Jamaican heritage, but she has the British accent. So I'm honing in on oh. yours. I love hearing the I love hearing Caribbean accents, which I don't get to hear very often. Yay! So it's three West Indian <laughs> ladies up in here today. Yay! <laughs> um, so we'll begin first. I want to ask you first about um for you, Sarah, writing this book, because um I know for a lot of black people, especially in the West Indies, there's this kind of interesting thing where we are aware of our are the history of racism in the Caribbean. We know it, we see the shadow houses, we see the plantations we walk past them we drive past them but we in a way i think is all i always think of it think of it as a um as a defense mechanism where we kind of like separate and compartmentalize our history from our present so talk about as a as a jamaican writer like delving into this history to create this story which is in essence sort of people would look at it as a romance story at first but it to me it's not a romance story i look at it as a cautionary tale <laughs> of, of falling in love with people who don't understand you. So talk a bit about yes. writing this book and 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 go delving into the history of um, slavery in Jamaica as well as in England. Yes. God, what a good way to look at it. That's kind of what the character of Sal is saying to Franny all along. You know, these people don't have anything for you, Franny. Why are you obsessed with them kind of thing? You know, as you were talking, I was thinking about my own background, which is that, you know, I... I Grew up in a mixed race Caribbean family. Um, and I was the darkest of my siblings. And I mm. had this, I mean, I had a grandmother that I think a lot of Caribbean people will relate to this experience who basically passed for white, you know, that sort of white creole. And because I was her darkest grandchild, she was obsessed with keeping me out of the sun. And so that as you were asking me the question, I was thinking that formative experience, it's like this sort of denial of blackness of where it comes from, or the fact that we could only be this kind of family because of the legacy of slavery, which means, you know, both owners and enslaved people sort of coming together in the Caribbean. It's such a unique part of our history. But we try to put it in the background because most of us want to deny it. It's painful, but also it's left this legacy of colorism. And so for me, the symbolism of like trying to deny the blackness, stay out of the sun, don't get too dark, you know, don't, is also the legacy of trying to deny that the reason that we are this way is because we are the descendants of enslaved people. And I think it was one of the things that drove me to reading that you know, if you feel like an outsider as a child, you kind of escape in books. And that reading um, for me was a way of trying to find that identity because even growing up in, you know, being educated in Caribbean schools, we were not taught the history. It was like going in search of my own history, all aspects of it, including the bits that people were trying to get me to deny. Um, and that's what led me to Franny ultimately, you know, the, the idea that you could embrace the history you could put it on the page you could get people to confront it talk about it and face up to the reality of it mm. and for you Carla Simone talk about this um this character of Franny I think she's so complex and she's so layered because as a black person as a black woman and as a dark-skinned black woman like there's a from the beginning I was like Franny you this woman doesn't love you you know like her her love is more of a shell of a shield for herself like for marguerite she she uses people particularly black people to shield herself from the realities of her own situation so for you when you were reading the script or if you read the when you read the book and then you were preparing to to play franny how did you look at who franny was as a person and this i think she herself didn't understand who she was. And so she was looking for this kind of understanding from Marguerite in a way, and, but she wasn't getting the healthy kind of understanding. Cause I would the entire time I was like, girl, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny you say that. Cause I, I asked Sarah the same thing. I remember, um, cause I read the book and I was like, what are you doing? And this <laughs> I became her and, you know, 
understood her and like kind of fleshed her out it was just like objectively Carla was like what is going on so um, yeah I remember like speaking to Sarah about it and trying to figure out why why does she love this woman so much like she's you know one minute she's you know like the love of her life and the next minute she's pushing her away like why is Franny putting up with this and you know Franny is just she's a young naive woman who's never experienced love before um she has little experience with love even maternal she comes over to London um and she meets this woman who she's just like completely like in awe of and she's just really intrigued by her and she kind of pursues that and falls in love with her and you know your first love <laughs> it's very it's chaotic it, it's it's passionate it's really intense and she just you know she would like to skip down the road with this woman um and she doesn't quite understand why well she does understand but she she wants her to feel that same way um madame to feel the same way about their relationship as she does um but yeah just from becoming franny and kind of understanding who she is and what she's been through in her past and you know kind of you know the the darkness that she's had to deal with and carry um when she does find someone that she feels that she connects with she latches onto that because she's not getting it from anyone else and you know she she believes that this is true love um she really does um you know she experiences another type of love when she meets Sal and um you can say that that she should have held on to that a bit more but <laughs> <laughs> uh, we do stupid things when we're in love you know we're all human we make mistakes and she she went down the other path um yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the like the thing with Franny with this book and this con and this show, which I'm good, I know it's gonna spark a lot of conversation, is for me, I see Franny as as I said, she's very complex. And one of the things about her that frustrated me, but I also really understood and I also kind of broke my heart with this character is how she saw other black people because of her own upbringing and the horrific things that she saw and experienced, she in a way, didn't understand black people in the way you would think she would. Like this, like this, the situations with Sal. Like she's like Sal is this strong black woman who has carved out her own path. And as you said, Carla, like I was thinking the same thing. Like this is who you should not emulate, but this is who person this is, you can look to for support. You know, this is a person who can help guide you along the way. And then there's Laddie, who is who who broke my heart because like his story is very heartbreaking and that painting that he that he was in is kind of very similar because I know there's another painting in um I think the museum that has a young boy who is like a footman yeah. to the family so when I saw that it was like oh I see the reference for this because like you're talking about showing the behind the scenes of these paintings of how of the lives of these black people who were in these paintings and um and the thing with Franny is she doesn't understand Laddie. She doesn't understand why he doesn't want to be around Madame. She doesn't understand why he doesn't want to be in that world in the way. Because she's like, why would you leave? You know, like I don't understand. And she doesn't understand that the reason he would leave is because he was being mistreated. He was basically groomed. And I'm like, tell, I'm like thinking he was with these people from a child. So clearly things happened to him while he was a child. And he and they groomed him into and and Mar and Madame groomed him and he became her lover. And I was thinking in my head, Franny doesn't she's she she's compartmentalized the way how life is between black people and white people and the power imbalances. She doesn't realize that he was in a sexually abusive relationship because that's not clicking. So for you, um, Sarah, um, Sarah, talk about the character of Laddie because I know he's um. He doesn't have as big a role, but I think he says so much about who um who Franny could have been, you know, if she had that the she she thinks she's strong, but she's not as strong as she thinks. So who I think I see him as a person like this is who Franny could have been if she had listened, you know, and if she had the real self-confidence that she thought she did. You know, both Laddie and Sal are kind of models for what Franny could have had. And she is at times torn. So I don't think her response to them is um, simple. I think her response to them is complicated because she is torn. One of her reactions to Laddie is jealousy. She's She is kind of envious that he's managed to become self-sufficient. And at times she fools herself into thinking that it's because he's a man. Um, Sal's route to self-sufficiency was sex work. And one could argue that that is also 
um, you know, comes with its own complications and possibilities for abuse, which is hinted at, you know, the, the women are abused in that line of work. Um, and so they are models, but the models are not without complication. It was really important for me that we explored all of the possible avenues to self-sufficiency and self-fulfillment that there could have been realistically for Black people in London in the early 19th century. But the thing is that Sal and Laddie probably don't have stories the way Franny had a story because, you know, if someone's happy and successful, that's not a story. The story comes from the conflict. And so what makes Franny, to me, the most attractive um, kind of key to this whole uh, thing is the journey she goes on because she doesn't remain in the point of view that we find her in. Mm -hmm. You know, she herself has been groomed in the sense that she's been made she's been brought into the house she's been made to believe in her own inferiority unless she has access to this british kind of colonial education and so she's being taught like many of us have been taught from these backgrounds that you know this sort of the english literature and english art and english production is the best in the world and it's what she should admire and emulate and she doesn't see herself there and so her journey for me is maybe even more interesting than the journey of sal and, and laddie who come fully formed because she has to get to that point of self-acceptance and of loving herself and of finding pride in who she is um and and they are helpful along the way but the real story for me is how do we meet that challenge you know know the way she had to right and in talking about the british education system but having been grown up in Barbados, that's what we were brought up under i still spell things the british way <laughs> um, but in 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 referring to that that was actually gonna be my next question to carla simone because the thing about franny is her mm -hmm. self-assuredness or and her self-confidence to me is a lot of it is a is a facade like a lot of it is uh, false bravado, but a lot of it is also very real because she's, she knows that she has to present this friend. And like for you, Carla Simone, there's something you do where you're always pushing back your shoulders. You're tilting up your head just a bit, you know, straightening your spine because this is how Franny has to show people that she's confident, that she owns the room and she owns her space. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something her, the interesting thing with her relationship with uh, Madame is that Madame thinks that they're both in the same situation. I, 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 to me, I put it in my head as they, they think they're both in the same gilded cage. You know, like these are two women who are being held down by misogy by a patriarchal misogynistic society who's being controlled by this extremely rich white man. And like she, she kind of um, lets Franny believe that they're on the same level, but they're not. You know, there's still the power imbalances. Like, Madame is still a white woman. She's still married to this man. She's still a free white woman. Well, as well, Franny is a black woman who uh, is technically not enslaved. She's still technically owned by this family because she was given to them. She still doesn't have the freedom to leave when she wants to and how she wants to. So talk about the di that, I think, that dynamic of Madame and Franny's relationship because these are two women that think they're being <laughs> held by the same cage, but they're not. You know, Madame is still in like she's still living in a in a gilded cage while Franny is like to me enclosed in a um in one that's more in um what's the word I want to say? It kind of invisible, but more but stronger. Because like um racism, colorism, all of those things are invisible uh barriers to people, but for black women, black people, we know what they are. You know, we can feel them when we walk around, even in present day, we go when we go into places that are predominantly white, we still feel like we're being watched, you know, we still have to be careful of how we move and how we talk. Yeah, um, it's funny that like, you say, uh, you talk about like how she's carrying herself and the, the bravado, because yeah, I, I definitely felt like she always had to kind of prove, you know, that 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 she is not not worthy, but like she she's not beneath anyone, you know. And um, for me, how I approached it, I didn't actually approach it in the sense that um, she, she it was like a front like franny believed it like i think because her mother fibber um although they didn't really have that maternal bond because it was quite hard for them to have that kind of loving um tender relationship fibber was a strong woman and a strong model that she could look to she saw this this 
beautiful black woman who owned like she was working you know on um john lanter's estate but she owned and commanded her space and that was the woman that she looked up to and she yearned that kind of that bond but she just couldn't have it so when franny carries herself it's because she's hearing fibber in her head telling her franny like you can't let these people like show you up franny like franny 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 all the time and she's just carrying that she genuinely believes that I'm you're not better than me she's carrying herself in this way because I do think that I I deserve to be here and you know when she does arrive at the Benhams um she can leave she can technically run off and you know what I'm not staying here I don't want to be a mate she like she's a free woman she can she knows that she can she can go off into the streets but she just doesn't know what to do she could like she she thinks she's making the intellectual decision to use survival to survive and stay in this house and I don't know come up with some kind of plan and figure out where she's going to go to next and in that process of staying there kind of trying to rack her brain she falls in love with madame and then she there's that thing that's stopping her from leaving where she's like I shouldn't really be here but there's that tether um and then she you know some may say foolishly or some may say naively whatever the word is she decides to you know pursue that um but yeah I, I think it was more that she she never she's never met a woman like madame before um franny was educated kind of in secret in jamaica and she hadn't come across another woman that read literature like her and that was as educated as her and that really intrigued her um and yeah i, I don't think she she felt like she was in the same position as her she was very aware that she was aware of like sometimes madame would say something and I'm like you know like when she um there's a scene where they're talking about um franny's education and madame's like you were quite lucky to be educated and Franny's like you don't get it but i'm just gonna kind of i'm gonna leave it you know i don't think she's <laughs> she's that um she's still clued up on on the situation um even when she meets um laddie like i think franny respects him a lot the only problem is <laughs> She is jealous. She's very jealous of because it's it's not quite clear what the the relationship is between her and Madame. And he's just suddenly come uh, come towards them, and he's being all cocky, and he's kind of kind of he's trying to he's fluffing his feathers, and he's trying to show that he's better than everyone. And Franny's like, "You're not better than me." <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing, right? The two of them are competing. They're always yeah. butting heads. It's like that 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 um, that fight for power. Um, I've always said like if if Madame was in the in the picture. Franny and Laddie will get on like a house on fire. Like they would run circles and rings around everyone in that place. You know, like they're so intellectual and they, they're very quick with their responses and they, they know they're very clued up on society. But <laughs> Madame comes in between that um, because she loves this woman and she suspects that this man is trying to steal her woman. Um, that's how I've, I've always seen yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's yeah, it's very complex because obviously, yes, she does believe this, but then also, you know, society and stuff is the reason why she's molded her way in a certain way. Um, so yeah, she carries herself in a certain way because of the societal pressures. Um, but yeah, I don't think she, in my approach with Franny anyway, I've never approached her in a sense that she feels she's better than Sal or Laddie or anything like that. Um, she has a very high sense of worth. Um, just in the wrong places, <laughs> I suppose. Um, yeah. Yeah, the thing about the education, that's... <clears throat> the, the thing about the education for me is, what struck me is that, that I just said, like, Madame was like, oh, you're so lucky you're educated. And the thing that clicked in my head immediately is that you don't know why she was educated, yeah. you know? She was educated to help this man in his research. And his research was basically... Um, doing anatomical examinations of black bodies, you know, he was dissecting them, looking at them as animals and like seeing them as things. And like he I would have, I, I saw him as one of the people that would have been involved in phrenology, you know, and talking about how black people are less than because of the shape of our skulls and all that garbage. But I was thinking like this, this white woman with all of this privilege and all of this money, who is also educated, because as you said, Carlos, when there's reading the same literature and she's telling, I'm like, you are a white woman telling this black woman she's so lucky because she's, she's able to read a book. And that's just to me show like this um, naivete that um, Marguerite had. And also this, she's very much like, 
she's seeing this like this black woman who's strong and self-assured and she's not seeing her as a victim of a society of society as well she's not seeing her as a victim of um of slavery you know like of and of like racism and and sexism because like she has these men telling her like bartering her and trading her like she's a thing and i want to talk about the education aspect because i think that's such a very important part of who franny is but also a very important part of this story in that you you're discussing how education is was in a way used to civilize black people and you know teachers to be better but it doesn't matter how well we speak you know how well read we are how many degrees we have like we are still when we go into certain spaces we're still seen as less than you know we're still judged as just being black people and that's what franny experienced like she's in this courtroom and she has she's her civil her right her civil rights are being trampled all over she's not being allowed to testify for herself you know, she's still being looked down upon. She's in this household and the maids are still looking down on her. She's no different than a, than she's no different than a slave or even less than, you know, because like these people are still jealous of her education. So, Sarah, I want both of you to talk about this. But for you, Sarah, like including that in the story. And I think to me, it's one of the most important things you discuss in the film is how education is used against black people. Yeah, I mean, education is complicated, isn't it? Because it is the most valuable thing we can have. I truly believe that, um, you know, for me, the 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 sort of pull towards books and reading and, and learning that drives Franny as a very young girl, essentially into the plantation house, was a very strong pull for me, you know, from the minute I first learned to read. And it is what I truly believe empowers us in the world and gives us, as Carla Simone says, that sense that you can be in any space and know that you belong there and that there's no one better than you. And growing up with West Indian parents, that was instilled in me as well. But it is also dangerous. It was. It is also dangerous. And one of the reasons it is dangerous is because our education is limited to what we've inherited from the colonial system, both in the Caribbean and in the UK, also in America, a different kind of colonial history, um, you know, and possibly Canada as well with the kind of links to, to British history. And um, one of the dangerous things it does for people like Franny, for women of color, is give you the sense that you are not reflected anywhere. And if you're not reflected anywhere, then you're not valuable. And it is very hard to reconcile these two states of mind. On the one hand, extremely intelligent and educated. And on the other hand, all of the sources in music, in literature, in art, you know, in photography, whatever you look to is telling you people like you don't belong center stage. And I mean, I want to emphasize that this is a story first and foremost, you know, a love story, complicated as it is, a whodunit, you know, a murder mystery, but also thematically important is this idea um, that we can debate to what extent was she helped or harmed by this education she received. It's both her greatest source of pleasure and her greatest source of pain. You could say the same for Madame, who in many ways to me is a symbol of the education. You know, at one point in the novel, although not in the show, Franny says, everything that beauty is, she was. You know, Madame is the ultimate symbol of beauty, white, female, delicate, spoiled, pampered, privileged. I want to just say a word in defense of Madame, though, within her own limitations as a kind of selfish, spoiled addict, she thinks she loves these people. She just isn't aware that her own circumstances have created damage in her. And one of the, the bits of damage that she's carrying is this limit to her ability to empathize. There are things that Franny has been through she just will never have access to. And I think that is very important in race relations. You know, when we talk about trying to understand each other across this divide of, of race relations. It's not just about black people understanding, it's about white people understanding and stepping past the sort of privilege and the kind of bubble wrap, which is what Madame should be doing. It's her challenge and she might not be doing successfully, but her intentions are good. She does, I think she does believe that she loves and is showing love. And the, the idea is, you know, the viewer can debate whether what she's doing is healthy or not. Mm. But she needs to be a symbol for this thing, the thing that attracts us, that we're obsessed with, that we are measured by when we go out into the world, but that doesn't always serve us. And it is the eternal dilemma of, you know, um, Black people who 
are, I think, we have done so well in spite of our history to achieve what we've achieved. But we've done that in spite of all of the odds telling us you don't matter. And for me, Franny really kind of symbolizes that disconnect, that having to discover how to love yourself when all of the influences around you are telling you you're not lovable. And for you, Carla, like, how do you feel about like what's uh, everything that Sarah is saying? And like this whole, to me, I think that like, you're saying like the education is who is what defines Franny because it, like her speech, it defines her speech. It defines the way she sees the world and how she sees herself. So like, how do you see Franny as a character, but also like, how did she change your own life after having played this character and learning, learning more about life back then and like like how does she affect you like Carla Simone yourself oh playing um Franny was like a, a crazy emotional journey um yeah just from having the material before becoming her I was like trying to dissect and figure out why she was doing certain things but once I became her I understood it and yeah, I will advocate her like to forever because I, I admire her so much. You know, like Sarah says, like despite everything, despite all the things that have been thrown at her and despite all the stuff she's been kind of pressured into doing and experiencing, she still had a, an admirable amount of self-worth and she still carried herself in a way that was like, you, you're not going to get me down. And I just, I just really... Yeah, I just really love that about her. Um, obviously, she does certain things where I, I was like, oh, it was really stressful because, you know, there's a point in people's life where you see you see that moment where if you went this way, it would be completely different. You would have a completely different life. But, um, yeah, I just approach it as she's a human being. Um, I have to create this human life um, and try and create that in a truthful, authentic way. And some people are going to love her, some people aren't, but that's just that's just life. You don't like everyone. And that's the whole point of telling stories to, you know, make people feel something and think and spark conversation and kind of, you know, figure out if how you feel about, about a story or about a person. Um, I personally would hope that everyone loves her because I love her. Um, but at the end of the day, it's not, it's not important. It's just important that everyone, you know, takes in the story and, and kind of invest in that, um, that journey with her. It is a, an emotional roller coaster for sure. I personally love her. I wanted to hug her. The ending, I was just like, oh, broke my heart because I was like hoping she'd get up, but I knew it was like my heart. I knew, but <laughs> I, I, but I do appreciate this character, and I do, and she did make me think a lot about um like the like I, this is something I've been thinking about recently, like how the history of race in the Caribbean and the West Indies, and how segregation still exists, even though we don't want to acknowledge that it still exists, and like the issues of colorism and all these kind of things. So. I do love the character and I do love Franny and I think you've done a, a, a beautiful job of portraying her and like giving her mm -hmm. breathing life into this character and so much um Sarah I really appreciate you writing this book and I can't wait to read it and um just again I, I, it always fills me with joy to be able to speak to people from of uh, West Indian heritage in this job because I live in Toronto now so like whenever I get to speak to people in this industry with similar background to me always brings me joy so thank you so much both of you for this project and for and for Franny, and I, and I can't, and I can't honestly can't wait to see the conversations that um, is going to be had once this show <laughs> premieres in North America. It's going to be interesting on Twitter. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, it will be interesting. And that's the point, you know, it's, we're not trying to do flat, boring things. I think we have to, in order to engage with this, we have to think about it. We have to face up to some hard truths, but also hopefully have some fun along the way. And that's, to me, that's the joy of being involved in a project like this is that, as Carla Simone says, you might not like everything Franny does, but hopefully you'll just like the experience of being with her for the ride. Sure, I, I'm sure people will. Thank you so much. And have a good day. Thank you. Thanks.